Good morning and a very warm welcome to you today. I'm Rachel and you're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Global Markets Roundup. Benchmark U.S. indices closed the week in the red on Friday, June the 18th, with the Dow Jones diving to its lowest level since January. That says Americans marked the Juneteenth holiday to commemorate the end of slavery some 155 years ago. The S&P 500 was down 1.31% to 4,166.45. The Dow Jones dropped 1.58% to 33,290.08. The Nasdaq Composite shed 0.92% to 14,030.38 and the small cap Russell 2000 lost 2.17% to 2,237.75. Markets remain subdued as tens of thousands of Americans celebrated the Juneteenth holiday marking the abolition of slavery in 1865. Investors also took their cues from the St. Louis Federal Reserve President James Bullard's comments that inflation rose more than the central bank's expectations. The senior Fed official also says that the six of his colleagues expect a first rate increase in late 2022, sooner than the central bank indicated on Wednesday. Eight of the 11 critical segments of the S&P 500 traded lower. Technology stocks saw small gains while energy and financials tumbled. Global consulting powerhouse PricewaterhouseCoopers on Friday said it would spend 12 billion US dollars and hire 100,000 people by 2026 in a major expansion plan. PwC's US chairman Tim Ryer says the company's global workforce will increase by one third from the current 284,000. Meanwhile, the G7 nations will announce new climate actions on Sunday. That's according to the UK government. Wealthy nations would enhance funding to the developing world to build renewable energy infrastructure. Part of the focus would be on cutting reliance on coal-powered plants. American pharmacy retail chain CVS Health Corp says it is registering increased sales in its stores. It expects a 2% jump in front store sales this year. Energy stocks, meanwhile, were bottom movers in Friday's session. Shares of ExxonMobil Corp declined by 2.03% and Chevron Corp fell 2.74%. Royal Dutch Shell stock dropped 4.76% and Enbridge Inc. stock dropped 1.77%. However, shares of Clean Energy Corp jumped 6.03%. Berkshire Hathaway stock fell 2.05% and JP Morgan and Chase & Co stock fell 2.49% while PayPal Holdings, their shares gained 1.92%. In technology stocks, Adobe gained 1.69% while Intel Corp shed 3.38% and Facebook shed 1.54%. Electric vehicle maker Tesla stock traded flat with a marginal 0.31% increase from the previous close. The Ford Motor Company lost 1.32% and chipmaker ASML Holding lost 4.19%. The biggest losers on the S&P 500 were energy, financials, utilities, consumer non-cyclicals, basic materials and real estate. Moving on to the top gainers and top losers now. The top performers on the S&P 500 included Lenar Corp, Adobe, Enphase Energy, Generac Holdings, and on the NASDAQ, the top performers were Sykes Enterprises, Garon Corp, Alfie Inc., Luacong Technology Corp, and on the Dow Jones, Home Depot, Capital, Cat, Caterpillar Inc., Nike, Microsoft Corp. were the leaders. The top laggards on the S&P 500 included Globe Life, Baker Hughes, FMC Corp., Lincoln National Corp., and on the NASDAQ, Orphazyme, Etheria Pharma, Urban One, Capstone Green Energy Corp, and on the Dow Jones, Sev Chevron, Walgreens Boots Alliance, Goldman Sachs Group, Travelers Companies, where are the laggards? On that note, it's time for a very short break. Stay with us. We'll be back soon. Crypto talk by Kalkine. The crypto market has been red hot. 
given the Bitcoin rally since the past year. And now the most famous cryptocurrency has got competitors, Dogecoin and Ethereum. If the crypto market excites you, tune in with me, Sage, to know the latest developments about the existing digital currencies and the new ones that are joining the race. I'll help you understand the opportunities and the risks the crypto market has in store for you. For all the digital currency related developments, continue watching Crypto Talk by Kalkine. Hello, welcome back. I'm Rachel. You're watching Kalkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Global Markets Roundup. We're discussing U.S. market updates from Friday's closing. Let's look at the volume movers. The top volume movers were Apple Inc., the Bank of America, AT&T, General Electric, Intel, Wells Fargo, Huntington Bank Shares, Ford Motor Company, Pfizer, Jerome Corp, Context Logic, Tellurian, Orphazyme, Clean Energy Fuels Corp. Moving on to the futures, commodities and bond market. Gold futures were down 0.59% to $1,764.30 per ounce. Silver slightly decreased by 0.11% to $25.83 an ounce, while copper declined 1.38% to $4.12. Brent oil futures were up 0.15% to $73.19 per barrel, and WTI crude gained 0.51% to $71.40 a barrel. The 30-year Treasury bond yields were down 4.05% to 2.016, while the 10-year bond yields decreased 4.72% to 1.440. U.S. dollar futures index rose 0.49 percent to $92.33. Now let's look at the U.K. market news. The London markets traded in the red zone after the release of U.K. retail sales data. Moreover, the Office for National Statistics had reported a monthly drop of 1.4 percent in U.K. retail sales during May 2021 when compared with the prior month. It had shown a monthly gain of 9.2% during April 2021. The FTSE 100 listed Tesco shares dropped by around 4.07%, even after the company had reported a marginal growth in like-for-like -like sales for the first quarter, benefited by the relaxation of the COVID-19 restrictions. Car dealer Inchcape had stated that the full-year pre-tax profit would remain significantly ahead of the consensus estimates, boosted by the better-than-expected performance during the first half of financial year 2021. The shares climbed by approximately 3.08%. Rotalk shares grew by around 0.18% after the company was upgraded by Morgan Stanley to an overweight. Fresnillo shares went up by around 2.26% and remained the top performer on the FTSE 100 after a surge in the gold price. Top three volume stocks in the FTSE 100 include Lloyd's Banking Group, the Vodafone Group, BP, and the top three sectors trading in the red, uh, energy, consumer cyclicals, and financials. Currency rates. The British pound to the US dollar is at 1.3826. The euro to the pound is 0.8587. On that note, it's time for a short break. updated while on the move. We will tell you where the crypto craze has reached. Where the property market is headed next. What the world is doing to become more environmentally friendly. Apart from tracking the daily market charter. Be on top of the latest news and announcements with Calcine TV. Hello and welcome back. I'm Rachel. You're watching Calkine TV live from Sydney. This is the Global Markets Roundup. Let us now look at Australian market updates and see how the market is set to shape up today. On Friday, the Australian Benchmark Index closed the session slightly higher by 0.13%, 1,000. 
or 9.9 .9 points. However, due to a pessimistic session on Friday in the U.S., today the ASX 200 is poised to open lower. The U.S. Fed's prediction on hiking interest rates sooner than expected has weakened the market sentiments. On Friday, the Australian and the New Zealand dollars traded close to their 2021 lows as the risk of preemptive rate hikes from the U.S. Fed threatened the global reflection trade, helping their U.S. counterpart. The Aussie was hanging on the support level of 75.58 cents, having slid 0.8% on Friday, closing the week 1.9% down. The Kiwi dollar fell over 1% to 69.34 cents. Bitcoin is trading flat on the cryptocurrency market with a minor gain of 0.5% to 35,678 US dollars. That's at 20 past nine in the evening, Greenwich Mean Time. Its counterparts, Dogecoin and Ether, are also trading flat having recovered from the lower levels. The grim session on Wall Street didn't spare any sector, including the Nasdaq, which ended 1.14% lower, closing the session near the day's low. Australian technology shares, such as Brain Chip Holdings, Afterpay and Zero, could open with a gap down. On Friday, crude oil shook off earlier losses and rebounded from lower levels, following reports that OPEC expected limited U.S. oil output growth this year. Australian energy shares, such as Woodside Petroleum, Xantos and Beach Energy, might see some pairing of losses from Friday's session. On Friday, gold struggled to recover and ended the session in the red for the sixth straight session. The yellow metal closed the week with a sizable loss of 5.7%, making it its worst week in over a year. The U.S. dollar's extended rally on the back of the U.S. Fed's hawkish outlook impacted gold's demand. Gold miners, such as St. Barbara and Newcrest Mining and De Grey Mining, could continue with their downward trend. On Friday, the most actively traded iron ore futures contract for September month delivery closed the session with an uptick of 1.99% to 1,229 yuan. Copper on Friday closed the week with its biggest fall since March 2020 after China said it would sell state reserves to limit prices. The U.S. Fed's signal to tighten its monetary policy also helped copper tumble to lower levels. The shift in tone from the U.S. central bank also propelled the U.S. dollar towards its largest weekly gain since April 2020, making metals more expensive to hold in other currencies. Local miners to keep an eye on are Fortescue Metals, Rio Tinto and the BHP Group. OK, then that's all from me for now. Stay tuned with Calkine TV for more live market updates. We'll be back with more news on the markets, economy, diverse themes and sectors. I'm Rachel signing off for now.